Is it live? It's live. Hey everybody, good morning. It is Margaret. It is Margaret. I am Margaret. Welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. In today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 jewelry terms that you need to know. But before we get started, hello, my name is Margaret. I am a stay-at-home homeschooling mom who makes extra money by selling things on eBay, Etsy, making shirts for merch by Amazon, and one of my big passions is jewelry. So I do a lots and lots and lots of jewelry videos. And if you are new, I would love to have you subscribe. We have lots of fun. I do lots of live videos. Um, we're live right now, so there's a chat going, and you get to know people in the community, and it. It's awesome. So would love to have you subscribe. And I want to also ask, I'm going to, where is this? I always do this. Okay, click the button. There it is. Um, come over and follow me on Facebook. This is me on Facebook, Texas Gal Treasures. Um, I share questions here. Like this morning I asked, which video should I do today? I couldn't decide. Oh, I pushed that the wrong way. Uh, I couldn't decide, so I had you guys help me. Um, figure out which video I should put out today and if I go live or things like that so I, I post things there so come follow me on Facebook I'm also on Instagram and also come over and join jewelry lovers and sellers we've got the big hope diamond up top this is the jewelry group jewelry lovers and sellers um, so make sure also ah, I was trying to scooch it so you can see it answer those questions they're really easy questions when you join just to kind of weed out spammers and things like that um, so come join us over there because we've got a lot of good things going on, lots of learning. And as soon as the move is over, I'll be doing lessons and class, you know, themes and things like that. Again, those are my kids going out. Um, so make sure you go and join those two places. And then yesterday, uh, I talked a little bit about a plan I have for the channel and I got a really good response from you guys. So the plan is that once we start getting some, some more subscribers and views and things like that on the video, I want to start buying uh, lots off of eBay, but having you guys help me. So in, you have to be in jewelry lovers because I'll post like three lots and have everybody vote on it and then I'll order it. We'll get it, unbox it and all that good stuff. And um, so share the video, share with your friends, tell everybody to come over and watch and subscribe and help out get the channel going. And I was talking about getting some lots off of eBay UK and eBay France and y'all I've been cheating. I've been cheating on you. I went and looked at some lots on eBay France this morning. And so I'm like, I might just have to order one just to get the ball rolling, right? Just to just to wet your taste buds a little bit for for the lots. I'm so excited about that. Okay, so I am here today to talk about 10 things or 10 terms you need to know um, with jewelry. Now, if you're if you're an expert with jewelry, you these may be things you already know. These were some things I knew before I really got heavy into selling jewelry, but then there are a few things that I didn't know what these terms were and I had to ask. So, these are some terms you might need to know. Uh, let's see. I'm going to say hey in the chat room. So, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming in the chat. I'm trying to I'm gonna try to stay on topic. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, okay, here we go. So, let me switch it over. Let's see how we're doing this. Okay, I have a lot of things. Out. First term that you may know already or you may not know is this one. Okay, and I even am pulling up how to pronounce it because sometimes I am so bad about pronouncing things and y'all make fun of me and I don't have a problem with that because I make fun of me too. Okay, ready? And you and if you already know what this one means, you can say so in the chat. Okay, so here's how you say this one. Cabochon. Cabochon. And let me tell you, I always say cabochon or carbochon, cabochon, and there's no R in there. Anyway, cabochon. One more time. Cabochon. Cabochon. Okay, so a cabochon, you guys, is a gem that's polished but not faceted. Like a stone has all these cuts to facet it, you know, make it really sharp and shiny. A, a cabochon is more rounded. So let's take a peek at some cabochons. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can switch them back. Switch? Okay, <laughs> I did. I pulled up the, er, the dictionary to, to do the pronunciations. All right, so here we've got just Wikipedia, Cabochon, um, and so what we're looking at, let me scroll it down a bit, you see how these stones are, these moonstones are just polished 
uh, and rounded. And these bits of amber are just polished and rounded. And even on the, the watch there, it's just like a polished rounded stone. So, Calvishan. Okay. So that is one. And that was one that you may have already known if you're new. It may be new to you. So, Calvishan. Here's some more. We're just rounded, polished. Now, the reason, another reason I wanted to do this is because when you're finding jewelry out and you bring it home and you want to list it and you don't know how to describe it, then these are some terms that can help you get your item found in search. Yeah. Oh, we just started. <laughs> Sorry, talking in the chat. All right. So that will help you. All right. Next up, let's see. Did I have, hang on. I want to peek. I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, let me peek over here and see if I have the last. Okay. Next one. Ready? Let's see if I've got them in the right order. Oh boy. This is one. All right, you ready for this one? I always say it wrong because I can't wrap my mouth around the R U R E. So I say Purr. <laughs> Purr. -er. And that's so good at that. So let's listen and let's hear how it sounds. Purr. Purr. That sounds rough. Purr. Peru -er. Peru. -er. Okay. So Peru <laughs> um, is a set of matching jewelry. All right. So I've got a few. Let's switch these around. Um, so I've again I pulled up Wikipedia just to kind of give you an idea. I know Wikipedia, you have to take it with a grain of salt on some of their stuff. But here is a beautiful sapphire Peru -er that was what does it say? Marie Amelia's of France. So it's got a necklace and a bracelet and a brooch and a, it's a, a whole set. Now I was looking at a site that I really like called Collectors Weekly. I, I look at this one a lot and this one says that a true Peru, <laughs> it, it, it should be made up of at least three items. So um, I'm not sure if you're saying it's a Peru with just two bits um, like earrings and necklace. So let me know what you think about that. Um, <laughs> Clarence Ninja says, howdy neighbor, I only need to know two terms, buy and sold. Ah, oh, Demi Perur is a half set. Well, I would think so, because Demi is half or smaller, right? So like if you had a Demi, <laughs> why do I, why do I uh, 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 connotate this with champagne if I have a Demi bottle, a Demi, uh, Demi Boutte? Boutte? That's not right. A demi bottle is like a smaller bottle, and who wants that? No. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so that is that. Did I pull up? Oh no, that's that's giving you the next one. Shh. Okay, so Peru. These are these are some of the terms that I had to learn as well. So if you are a jewelry expert, and then this may be 101 for you. Okay, so we got the Peru. Okay, next up we have. This is one that I personally love. Are, oh, Rihanna is asking, are you putting Peru? Well, y'all are making me say this over and over again. I want to get a sampling of everybody and how they say this word because seriously, it's a it's hard for me to get out of my mouth. Are you putting that in the title or is there a keywords box for the items? Um, I would put it in the title if I had one, if I had a set like that, and then also on Etsy, like in the in the tags and things. I would definitely put that in there. So Next up, we have Damascene. Now, I've always said Damascene, um, but this one says Damascene. Damascene, okay. And this, I love, I'm going to keep saying Damascene because I'm just used to saying it that way. So, I love this jewelry. So, Damascene, Damascene, I don't it sounds like damn. Okay, Damascene, if I say it the other way, right? Um, wrong button, here we go. So, Damascene. Damascene looks like this. So you'll see this like black with the gold etching and little scenes and things like this. Um, so let's see, where, where is this? So, um, so relating to or denoting uh, the process of inlaying metal objects with gold or silver decoration. So that's what that one's. Um, so there was a video or, a, well, there's a video, but I don't think I pulled that one up. So it says about Damascene jewelry. And so it's showing how they're um, cutting down into it, into a piece, and then overlaying the gold or silver into that. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, goodness, the process, right? 
So that's the process it's showing there, which I think is so cool. And, ah, okay. And this is what the jewelry looks like. And I've had some beautiful Damascene pieces that I've sold. So, ha, ru. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, this is what it looks like. And some of them command a higher price than others, um, just kind of depending on what you've got. But that's what it looks like. You come across it, Damascene. All right, let me know how you're doing in the chat. If you're live, if you're watching this, and if you're like, ah, so far, I'm two for two, three for three, let me know. And at the end, if you're watching later, let me know in the comments section if there were some of these that you knew, that you didn't know, or maybe throw out some words that, because I'm planning on the next one already, um, that you would like to see in the next one that you see maybe was a new one for you when you started, or one that you see other people struggling with. So I've already got my list halfway done for the next one. So, all right. Yeah, as far as I know, it's still being done today. All right, so the next, okay, here we go. The next one that we're going to talk about, the next word is, there we go. So, lamp work. And now, a few of the ones that we're going to talk about today do have to do with the different types of glass, glass work and glass beading um, in jewelry because if you come across a piece of jewelry that is made from glass it helps to know if you flunked already today it helps to know um, what kind of glass and what process it was made because there are people that collect lamp work there are people that collect uh, dichroic glass and so knowing what the difference is can help you sell your piece if you're selling or if you're looking so you'll know how to describe it so my kids are playing outside, so I'm trying to hear them and do this at the same time. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let me get to the lamp work part. There was not a definite, like a, a spoken, I think we got this one. Okay, <laughs> so lamp working, lamp working is, a, and this was actually really interesting to me because I've seen my grandmother, if you guys know, my grandmother used to do porcelain arts, and she went through a phase where she did lamp working on some of her porcelain where she would put bits of glass she would get glass um like remnants that from a lady that she knew that did stained glass and so she would get like the broken chipped off pieces that would lay on the floor of the other lady's workshop and so my grandmother would place them on her pieces of porcelain and put them in her kiln and let the glass melt onto her porcelain anyway so i i knew sort of how this worked because of that but basically lamp working is glass work where a torch is used or a heat source is used to melt the glass right and then once it's melted then it's shaped and formed so let's take a peek at some lamp work um here it shows a guy with his torch and a lot of times i think of lamp work where it's got um like a bead and then there's a bit of a three-dimensional element to it where a, a flower is on there and it's kind of poking out or a, you know there's a bird in a minute you, you've seen these see the one the red and the with the little blue knobbies on the back of it like so um and if at any point you have something to add or if you think i've got something quite, not quite right leave a comment because i'm totally cool with that um oh thanks kaylee okay uh so here we've got some more lamp work where you can see it's sort of a, you can see the flowers and the three-dimensional trees. It's not always like that, but sometimes it's just little beads and I don't know how else to describe it, but it's kind of knobby on there. Now, I know I had one where it was some lamp work where there was a little bird. Here we go. Here we go. So here's a, a lamp work glass um, little bird that's been shaped out of the glass. So that's also lamp work there. Okay. And here's just, you know, lamp working being different than glass blowing in that glass blowing use a furnace to you as the primary heat source sorry there's something flying around although torches can also be used okay because there's a difference between lamp working and glass blowing anyway okay how do you know handmade from manufactured lamp work that's a really good question um let's see Deffer cat was saying something she said um, yeah, so that's something that I would have to look into a little bit more. This is just sort of an overview, but that's a really good question. So I'll have to find out. All right, so there was lamp work. Let me close out some of my 
tabs. I'm trying to think of how you would do that, like how you would manufacture that, you know what I mean? Because it, it seems like it would be very, I don't know, like hard to, to manu, I don't know, but I'm sure somebody will figure it out. Okay, next is Micro Mosaic. And this one is like what it sounds like, Micro Small mosaic made up of teen, of pieces right so we know what a mosaic is where people take tiles whether they're this size or this size or whatever size and they make a picture um, out of tiles or other pictures or pieces of paper or whatever micro mosaic means that it is little teeny 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 pieces made up to create a picture so let's take a look at some micro mosaic um i had some pictures down here but so, yeah, um, take a look. This is some micro mosaic that I had pulled up from Wikipedia. Uh, let me grab a sip of water real quick. So it can be done in glass. It can be done like with little bits of an enamel, um, enamel-like material, it says. So you might see that. I also saw some when I was looking later, and you have to let me know what you think of this. It almost looked like pieces of abalone, but they were really small, creating, I'm trying to figure out if I would call that an inlay or a, a micro mosaic. But look at this artist. Hang on, let me see, zoom this in. Look at how intense, I know this is not jewelry, but I was just like so blown away by this. This guy is assembling his micro mosaic with these tiny little pieces. I don't know if that's glass that he's using. Anyway, whatever it is, it's amazing. So. Ah, I clicked on the button. Okay, that's micro mosaic. So here, this is again Collectors Weekly. You can see, I'm trying to zoom it in. Like this one, that this is this is a, a what is that? The Pantheon, and you can see the little teeny tiny bits to create the picture right there. Um, now this one, I mean, I guess they they call it micro mosaic. I if I had seen that, I might not have necessarily called it micro mosaic, but maybe. It's something I should consider. Okay, so here's some more on Etsy. And what I did, just for funsies, is I sorted them, I think I sorted them by most expensive, because why not? Um, so here's a micro mosaic with the flowers. Here's another one. I mean, look how tiny this one is, this micro mosaic pendant. Um, so yeah, those are pictures made up from other little tiny things that yeah. so like so I mean this is kind of what I think of when I think of micro mosaic all the little bits creating a picture so there's that isn't that cool oh Kaylee says I've seen a dump in nail polish really okay looks like shrinky dings when we were kids Clarence Ninja says <laughs> that's what they did really they just like made a really big one and stuck it in the oven <laughs> no um Let's see, I'm looking in the chat to make sure I'm not. Oh yeah, I heard the break off point on glasses the way to tell. Yeah, that, I think that's called the fontanelle. You know, I, on the bottom, it's like almost like the belly button. I refer to it as the belly button on the glass, like hand blown glass and stuff. Okay, oh, I just cheated and let you all see the next one. Okay, so next up, uh oh, I clicked the wrong button again. Dude, let's go, this one goes to the top. There, okay. So next we have, oh, how many friends do we have watching? I, I don't know how to my thing up. Let me take a peek. Mm, we have 51 watching. Go over there and hit the thumbs up, friends, and we'll keep going. And also, if you're not subscribed, go over there and hit the subscribe button and share this with a friend or a jewelry group that you love and let them know to come over and subscribe and watch. Okay, so next up we have Ready? Okay, I think I've got the word for this one. Or did I, uh, I know how to say this, but I just like to have it because some people say I don't say things right, which is fine. Here we go, ready? Millifiori. Millifiori, okay. Any guesses in the chat? Some of you probably already know what Millifiori is. All right, Millifiori, ready? So Millifiori is also, um, this is an ornamental glass in which a number of rock, glass rods are used to create um, little images. So it means, in Italian, million flowers, a million flowers. So 
it's like, um, okay, here we go. I'll just show you. So where is it? Here we go. It'll make it easier. So here's some millifiori where they've taken the little glass rods and then they I, like slice them. I know they do this now with, um, there's like a kind of clay, but I think it's called something different with the clay. It's not called millifiori with the clay, or is it? Anyway, um, so it's a technique that's been applied to, okay, polymer clay, okay, yeah. Um, clay, but I think they do it with glass as well on the millifiori. Um, much easier medium to produce than the glass. Okay, so let's take a look at some millifiori. So here's millifiori glass. Okay, good. So they take it and they slice it and then they fuse it all together. So is it million? Thousand? Did I? Okay, well, come on now. <laughs> I thought Millie was a, a thousand in Italian. I'm going to go back and look, okay? That Millie, yeah, a thousand. Okay, a thousand flowers. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> now, where was I? There we go. So this is some um, Millifiori. It looks kind of like this. And there was something else um, I was going to talk to you about with this. Do, 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 G, oh, off talk. What is 14K GP? GP might be um, gold plated, possibly. Okay, so here we see millifiori, some little millifiori beads where they would take these little pieces to create the images um, and then melt them together. I thought that I had a picture of how they did that, but maybe I closed it out. Okay, but you can see sometimes they have them as just single beads, like so and string, strung them together. And then sometimes they're uh, fused together to create to create uh, other pieces like this beautiful butterfly. Isn't that gorgeous? So there's that, Millifiori. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, at least you can't stand this style. Some people love it, some people hate it, right? But there we have it. I mean, this is really pretty, I think. But yeah, there are certain ones that I'm just like, meh, nah, whatever. Okay, next up, we have, let's get this here. <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. This is one that I really like, but it was one earlier that I, when I first started selling jewelry, I had to learn what it was. Hang on. Ah, did I lose it? Oh my goodness, I think I lost it. Okay, so. A, this is rivoli. So a rivoli is a stone that is round and it is faceted um, and pointed on both ends. So it really catches a lot of light and a lot of color when when it catches light and color. Okay, so I'm going to come back and look in the chat. One second. Let me finish our rivoli. I'm, I see some chat going by. Um, so here, oh, you know what I didn't do? I did not flip it over. So you're still looking at the word Rivoli. Uh, here we go. Okay, so Rivoli. So Swarovski, Swarovski, I'm still, <laughs> um, Swarovski Rivolis are extremely faceted and bursting with color as is they're foiled on one side to reflect and intensify the light. And then they're pointed on both ends. So these are some images of Rivoli. And this one that's like purple, um, green and all, um, this one is called watermelon Rivoli. So sometimes you'll get ones that within that just being called a Rivoli, there are other terminologies to describe, you know, the colors and things like that. I had a beautiful pair of watermelon Rivoli cufflinks that sold. And I think I sold, I have a, either I have it or still, or I sold it, a watermelon Rivoli pendant. So, <laughs> um, okay, I'll come back to the chat in a second. So there's these. Let's see whether there any. Okay. And I was going to show you. Here are some up on Etsy. Look at these. Opal Electra Swarovski Rivoli. These are some that people, you know, you can buy to put into jewelry. Um, I know I searched particular jewelry so you could see. So they look like this. Very pretty. How many? Oh, okay. Here are some men's watermelon Rivoli cufflinks, like so. Very eye-catching, very blingy. Here are some other cufflinks, really nice. Um, sparkly, sparkles. Thanks so much for the, the, 
the compliments on the hair, you guys. But yeah, it's a new look for me. I've always been into vintage -y stuff, and I just was like, you know what? Let's do this. Let's make it happen. Okay. <laughs> okay, next. I just gave it away again. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, one site said that there was foil, and then the others, you know, are showing maybe not so much. Okay, so here you can see on the smoked topaz one, the foil on the back, like so. So that would help catch the light. You know what I mean? Like that. Okay, I'm trying to see if there's any others that I can see the foil on to show you. I'm not sure these ones are showing the foil on the back. Gold foil. Oh, okay, that's that's the gold foil on the back. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, next, we are going to switch to our next word. Okay, we got a couple more. Oh, I'm going to have to get a sip of water again. Oh, I promised I would look in the chat real quick. Okay. Uh, reminds me of hand-rolled candy, right, as you're done? That's right. Um... What do you call the vintage style where they paint small scenes on plastic or resin and porcelain? Um, sometimes those are called just cameos, even though they're not like the carved cameos. Depending on the style and the scene, sometimes they're love scene. Um, but I can find out if there's another term for that as well. Um, another one. Oh, good. <laughs> so you even have the trends. <laughs> All right, I'm looking real quick to see if I'm missing anything else before I go through. Okay, <laughs> there's some funny jokes in there. I'm not going to call them all out, Clarence Ninja. <laughs> okay, then, then next up, this is one that you probably know, but maybe, maybe not. Okay, this one is filigree. So what exactly is filigree? Let me get my, here we go. Filigree. Filigree. Good job, Margaret. You said that one right. Okay, so filigree is an ornamental work of fine, usually gold or silver wire, where it's just formed um, into swirls and patterns, really, usually, really delicate. So let's take a look at some filigree and a little bit more definitions of filigree. Okay, so here is a site. Let's see if I can scooch this. Um, this is called Estate Diamond Jewelry, and what is filigree? So here you can see, let me zoom that in, on this ring, you see the, the working with the, you guys can't see my mouse, the, oh, it's kind of an open work. It's not always open like so, but anyway, filigree. The definition of the word filigree comes from filigree, which doesn't help us very much, does it? Um, so it is a delicate embellishment in which fine pliable threads of precious metal are twisted and curled into design and then soldered onto or into the jewelry. So that is filigree. There's a lot more information here if you want to go look at it. Um, here are some different um, examples. So here's this Acrusian filigree ear stud. And as you can see, this time it's not open work. It's just done on there. Um, here's another sterling dish with lots of filigree. Uh, citrine, um, and I know there's different kinds of filigree as well. Um, I think there's one called Chantilly. I may be saying, I may be misspeaking, but there's different, like this filigree on this sterling dish, there's a, different styles of filigree. So that's one certain style that I can't remember the name of right now. So I don't know why I brought it up. But just so you know that there's different, different types of filigree as well. So... Let's take a peek. I just did a search for filigree just to give you an idea of what could be considered filigree. I can't, I can't tell if they're fighting. A lot of times the filigree will be open um, or lacy looking sometimes. I can hear them, but I can't hear what they're saying. That's the problem. Okay. So that is filigree. Next up, let's see. So, okay, also keep letting me know in the chat, like, okay, oh, I, yeah, I knew this one, this is what I knew, or that's a new one for me, that kind of thing. Because, yeah, I want to make sure I'm giving you information that's helpful. Uh, and let me know if it's helpful for you. I thought it might be. Okay, next one is dichroic. 
and which is also another type of glass work. Let me get to my dichroic tabs. All right, here we go. Let's see if I'm saying it right. Dichroic, 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 dichroic. Um, let's see. You had some black filigree earrings. Oh yes, yes, maybe more. So I have some type filigree type earrings here going on today too. So dichroic. So dichroic. Di dichroic. So di this is really cool. It's almost like futuristic-y. So dichroic glass um, has multiple layers. I'm going to read this so I don't say it wrong. Uh, multiple ultra thin layers of different metals such as gold or silver um, and then they oxidize them. Um, they are vaporized by an electron beam in a vacuum chamber. The vapor then condenses on the surface of the glass to form the crystal structure. So yeah, they are like it's really like futuristic. Okay, so let me switch it over so you can see what dichroic glass looks like. And the, the definition I got was from this Wikipedia, Fire Mountain Gems, etc., all that. So here is the art of dichroic glass. It talks a bit more about, you know, it's highly technical vacuum deposition process. Deposition just means deposit, so it like zaps everything. It's like Willy Wonka, okay? And then they fly through the air and then they recrystallize on the glass, right? I'm sure it's something like Willy Wonka. Anyway, <laughs> or not. So here we go. Here's some images of some dichroic glass. Um, it's really cool. I mean, I think once you see it and you know what it is, then you, you know, you spot it and you're like, oh, yeah, there's some dichroic glass. Let me get some better pictures for you. So here we go. So here's some, you can see this dichroic glass that has recrystallized in this formation. Um, let's see, here's some different different styles, different colors. My question is, I wonder if they're able to, you know, like this butterfly, I know they didn't form in that shape of a butterfly, but if they're able to control it in any way, if they're able to control, or is it just like, let's see what happens. So that would be interesting to find out, right? Like the Jetsons. Um, it would be interesting to find out, because here you see like some of that are striped, you know, or do the crystals just tend to, as far as scientifically, tend to gel with each other like oh I see some other particles that are are gold and some other particles that are silver I want to go be with my friends and then they just kind of stick together or if there's some process where they can do this uh, Rihanna says colored foils okay yeah so that would be interesting to find out like if they're able to or they just automatically go with each other so I can hear them yelling outside and I'm just like what are they doing I need like a walkie-talkie. <laughs> okay, so here we've got some dichroic glass for sale on Etsy. Some really stunning pieces. Um, some are more simple. Some are really amazing. And they again, the prices can vary depending on the piece and the style and everything. So, dichroic glass. Keep an eye out. Yeah, it would be interesting to find out if they're able to to form it and make it do. Yeah. Says so Debbie says, I've seen it. I would have never bought it. And there, I mean, it's not always this expensive, but there are some more, um, more pieces that are, are more expensive. And my mom really likes dichroic glass too. So I don't know. I guess it's just, I don't know. All right. Next we have, let's see. Whoop. After dichroic. Oh, is it the last one? Vermeil. Now guys, this, I knew what Vermeil was, I thought, but there was something a little more intricate about Vermeil that I didn't realize. So let's take a look and see if you already knew this because, you know, I'm a big believer in nobody can know all things. And so we're constantly learning. Pardon me. All right. <laughs> so Vermeil, let's take a peek at, okay, and now also on Vermeil, apparently I'm not saying it right, because listen. Vermeil, Vermeil, 
Okay, so that is one of the pronunciations. The other one there pronounces it vermeil. Vermeil. Or vermeil. I say vermeil. Uh, vermeil sounds like vermin to me. So I guess I, <laughs> I'm just going to, yeah, vermeil. Okay. Just found out the other day about unkenite. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a really cool stone, too. Um, okay, so vermeil. Here we go. Vermeil. Vermeil. I mean, I guess, yeah, vermilion. I'm looking at this over here. Okay. Vermeil. We'll just go with it. Okay. So, what is it? Now, here's what I learned about vermeil. Vermeil. Um, that I knew that it was um, a gold coating over a another metal, but what I didn't realize was that for it technically to be vermeil or vermeil, right? That's how I say it, vermeil. Um, Vermeil. Oh, you guys, you say it the way you want to say it. Okay, <laughs> in the chat, everyone's saying it their own way. Um, is that it has to be over silver. So that is very specific because I started looking into, well, what's the difference between be something being gold-plated? Because there are things that are gold-plated, but that doesn't necessarily make them Vermeil. They have to, Vermeil has to be the gold over silver. Not silver you know, amalgam, whatever, alloy, but sterling silver. So here we've got, you know, high quality without it being pure gold. Gold vermeil is a fantastic option. Um, yeah, so I, I looked up, you know, what is, there's gilting, silver gilt, okay, which is vermeil, a silver, either pure or still sterling, which has been gilded with gold, okay? So there's that. Um, so it says gold plating refers to either a thin layer of gold that covers the surface of a gold plated item. Oh wait, gold plating, that's different than, oh. so this is the difference between vermeil and gold plating. So gold plating is a gold plated item, which can be gold over just another metal. For it to be vermeil, it has to be over silver. Okay. Got it. Okay. So it's still gold plated. Vermeil is some is silver that's gold plated, but okay. it's all very intricate. <laughs> so here's another site. Um, Main. Oh gosh, how am I going to say this? If I can say it, mainly your urns and memorials, but they have a really good <laughs> definition and explanation of what's the difference between gold plated, vermeil, gold filled, etc. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. So here we've got on Etsy some gold, some vermeil jewelry. Okay. Now this is something I've seen, um, I've actually picked up, it's like a filigree, come on, open for me. Oh, my internet's being slow. Where it's this filigree sort of leaf style um, vermeil bracelet, necklace, pendant, whatever. Um, where it's sterling silver filigree that has been gold plated. So here we go. So that is an example of Vermeil. Cool. Okay. So <laughs> hopefully I was able to help you guys with some different terminology for jewelry that either you knew or didn't know. Hopefully you picked up something that was useful for you. If you have got any questions, anything that I didn't say quite right, or you want to correct my pronunciation, leave a comment. I'm happy to hear it. Also, if you've got some other words or definitions that you would like to see in the next, not definitions, terminology, that you'd like to see in the next video, let me know in the comment section down below. And make sure you hit that thumbs up and the subscribe button on your way out. And I like to throw out a song. So if you have an Alexa, I'm going to tell your Alexa to sing something. If you don't, you can look it up later. So uh, Alexa, play Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. And... I will talk to you guys later. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming.